My name's Roadrunner. I'm from Thorncliffe Park. It's located in like the East York area, by like the Danforth and Pape area. And yeah, that's where I'm from. My name just, yo, I just really like, like, I just really like the name Roadrunner. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I just, I don't really know where it came from. I gave myself that name though. Like nobody gave me that name. I gave myself that name. When I started rapping, I was like looking up names. You get what I'm trying to say? I was like, cause yo, I had, I, I was rapping in 2016 under the name Two Phones. You get what I'm trying to say? But when I came back onto the scene in 2019, I'm like, yo, I need to like rebrand a little bit. You get what I'm trying to say? And I was looking for names for the longest time. And yo, when I first started rapping again, my name was 71.tpk. So my name was 71.tpk and I'm like, I started rapping and I started buzzing a little bit and I'm like, yo, I don't really like this name, you get what I'm trying to say? Cause like, it doesn't really like, I don't really like it. I need something catchy, you get what I'm trying to say? So I just ended up like going with Roadrunner, you get what I'm trying to say? Like I would see like trucks that say Roadrunner Logistics, boom, boom. So I just, I, I saw it somewhere and I'm like, yo, that's a sick name, Roadrunner, you get what I'm trying to say? And I just, I ran with it. Um, my background, I'm from Pakistan. Um, my city, I'm from Gujarat, but like, like that's in like the Punjab area, you know? So I speak Punjabi and um, yeah, that's where I'm from. I was like, I, 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 was, I was in grade five, I was, I was like 11, 10, 11. I was in grade five. Yeah, of course. Yo, when I was in Pakistan, I don't, I don't know why I was a kid. So like, I imagined Canada to be like some like cartoon type of shit, you know, like some Disney World type of shit. But when I got here, I remember landing at the airport. I had my traditional clothes on, you know, and like I remember seeing like people and like this is the first time I actually seen like women like dressed the way they dress here. You get what I'm trying to say? Because where I'm from, like I, you barely you barely even see them outside. Like especially in my village, you you don't you don't really see them outside. And like to see that, like the first the first thing you see is that it's like, I was surprised. You get what I'm trying to say? And then I was like on the gardener and then I seen the CN tower and I'm like, yo, like I never seen buildings in my life. I'm, I'm from like mud houses and shit, like mud houses. And then you take the cow shit to put it on the mud house so it doesn't burn down and shit, you know? Yeah. Like that's where I'm from. So like me seeing buildings and like nice highways because like we never had highways. We never had like proper roads. It was just like mud roads. Like they just build it, you know? And, and yeah, seeing that for the first time, it was like, I was like taken away from, uh, like, I was like, you know, I was, I was surprised. I'm like, yo, like this shit looks lit. You know, it was pretty nice. Yeah. Story. I'll tell you a story right now. So, yo, I had like this girl I used to like in like kindergarten, you know, uh, her name was like Sawa or some shit, you know, like when I was like a baby, like, and then boom, one day fam, the only thing I remember is yo, one day she just never showed up to school and then Boom, I think she got hit by a bus, you know, like while like walking like to school, a bus hit her. I'm not even lying, like, yo, don't laugh, bro. Don't, laugh, don't laugh, bro. Why you laugh? Yo, honestly, I had like this friend, like her name was Sawa. Like we used to fuck with each other. I used to like, she was my best friend in school too. Like we, I used to like her. Like, I think she liked me too. I was in kindergarten, I was a baby, you know? And then one day she just got hit by a bus. She never came to school. Yo, life, life growing up back home was lit. Like we never had video games. We never had like PS4, PS3, PS2, like Nintendo boxes. Like the most that would happen was my dad would come from like Canada and he'd bring like, he was cheap. So he wouldn't bring like the expensive, expensive stuff. You know, he would just bring like chocolates. We'd get like a little, like, like a game box, not the good ones, like the fucking Walmart ones, you know? And then he'd just bring it. So I never really got to experience like, like video games and shit like that growing up. But like I had a good life because like, we used to have a stick and a tire. I hit the tire with the stick and just run around the village. And, and that was my life, you know, just growing up. And it was fun. I, like I had fun. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I, ha I think I, ha I had the best childhood. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for nothing, you know? Growing up in Thorncliffe was like, it was, it was lit still because like I I'm brown, right? So like when I moved to Canada, I, I just, I, I fit right in because like there was a lot of brown people around me out of time. And like, I remember like I, I moved in grade five and I remember going to, going to class and like everybody around me was brown. So it was like, it was easy, it was easy to fit in because like, 
I didn't have to like really speak English to them. I could just communicate in like my language and like we we're getting our thing, whatever we want to get across, we'd get it across, you know? Yo, uh, when I came to Canada, like, like Akon was popping, you know, like smack that all on the floor shit, like that shit was booming. And then like, I started getting into like, listening to like Tupac, like the mainstream stuff, you know, at the time, you know, like Biggie, Tupac and shit like that. And, and yeah, that's what I listened to like in middle school and shit and elementary school, you know? I didn't really listen to hip hop like that in elementary school, but I started in, in middle school, you know? That's when I really started taking hip hop in. So yo, from Toronto, I listened to like, I kinda, I listened to a lot of Doovie. I listened to, um, I listened to um, a lot of Nav. I listened to Drake, obviously, you get what I'm trying to say? Um, anything that's produced by Murder Beats, I don't listen to. So if it's produced by Murder Beats, I turn it off. You know what I'm trying to say? Murder Beats, I love you. Just give me a beat, broski. <laughs> give me a beat, fam. <laughs> I think it's great because I feel like we don't have enough representation in the city, you get what I'm trying to say, or around the world. I mean, like, the, 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 the brown, like, the Punjabi industry is, like, booming right now, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, those guys are going up. Like, they're signing big deals. They're doing big numbers. And, um... I just, I just don't think we have enough representation in like the rap community, you get what I'm trying to say? Like enough brown artists is rapping, you know? So it's good to see like a few from the city that are like coming up, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I don't have a relationship with AP Dylan, but he's a dope artist. I, I, I like what he's doing, you get what I'm trying to say? And Nav, yeah, I, I spoke to him on the phone one time, you know? I was in the, I was in the studio with, his, with, a, with like his best friend, you get what I'm trying to say? And they were on the phone talking, and I talked to him. He's a good dude, you get what I'm trying to say? I, I like his music, and I hope he excels in his career, you get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Top five greatest rapper, dead or alive? Okay, Pac, um, Biggie, Drake, okay, and um, who else is there? Pac, Biggie, Drake, Lil Wayne. I listened to a lot of Lil Wayne growing up too, still. Lil Wayne and, um, and Jay-Z still. Of course. Yo, like every every artist's dream in like Toronto is to collab with Drake. Like, get that Drake song, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, that's the biggest shit that could happen to you. You, you know what I mean? So obviously I'm gonna say Drake, you know what I mean? Um, Of course, Nav, because like, we're both brown, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, super hard too, you know? Nav. Um, Yo, my, the guy I'm listening to right now the most is No Cap, Rilo, um, who else is there? Rob69. Um, yeah, that's really about it, you know? But I want that. Like, every artist in the city wants that Drake collab, you get what I'm trying to say? That's the biggest shit that could happen to you, you know? Coming out of the city, like, that's life changer, you know? So yeah, if you ask me, like, who do you want to collab with? I'm gonna say Drake, you get what I'm trying to say? Every time, because that's what I want, you get what I'm trying to say? My family's cool about it, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, at first, they were like, they were like, yeah, yeah. Like at first when I started, it wasn't like, it was looked at, cause yeah, in my culture, music was look, looked down upon, you get what I'm trying to say, but I love making music. Like, I feel like it's helped me grow as a person a lot. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, if I wasn't making music, I'd probably be getting in a lot of trouble. So like, music's helped me a lot. You get what I'm trying to say? So like, they see that too now. So like, they've started to accept it a lot more because like, it's way better than like, doing like bad shit all the time. You're just making music you're in the studio, making bangers. Like your music streaming, like that's good shit. You get what I'm trying to say? And you're you're your own boss. You get what I'm trying to say? Like you're not working for nobody. You're just making music, bro. Like, yeah, I love making music, so. And even if they didn't like it, I would still make music. You get what I'm trying to say? Cause I love making music, you know? Yo, my mom's always, uh, my mom's always been supportive. Like she's been like, uh, she like, my mom follows one person on Instagram and it's me. You get what I'm trying to say? Like. She, she, like, she made an Instagram just to follow me. You get what I'm trying to say? She's been, she's been my number one fan. I love her. You get what I'm trying to say? My pops, on the other hand, like, he's not too big on the music shit, but he's that coming, 
around it now. You get what I'm trying to say? Because he sees like how much I love doing music. So like he's coming around it. And like my, my pops always listens to what my mom has to say. So like as long as my mom's okay with it, my pops okay with it. Because if my mom says it's okay, my pops going to say, yeah, it's blessed. You get what I'm trying to say? Yo, Rolling Loud was sick. Shout out Charlie B. You get what I'm trying to say for putting me on. Because yeah, I wasn't really on the list. You get what I'm trying to say? I was like... I was like cheesed about it. I made a post about it. I, no, did I make a post? No, I didn't make a post about it. But like I was cheesed, you get what I'm trying to say? I was like, yo, why didn't these guys have me on the list? Like I deserve to be on that list, you get what I'm trying to say? He, Nobody put me on. And then one day he just called me. He's like, yo, I'll, I'll bring you out um, for as a, as a guest performer. And um, I ended up performing. And it was probably like one of the best feelings I had in the world because I got a lot of opportunities after that. You get what I'm trying to say? I did a lot of shows after that, like... I did bear shows, bear promoters hit me up. Um, like just life just became better after that. You know, it started looking up. You get what I'm trying to say? So shout out Charlie for putting me on that list. You get what I'm trying to say? It was fun. I had a good time. I had a great time. I don't. That's the best thing to do. Don't. Like as an artist, there's not one artist in this world that doesn't get hate. The biggest artist in this world gets hate. You get what I'm trying to say? Like this shit, like yo, the, the only way hate's gonna get to you is if you're a kid, if you haven't grown mentally, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm not gonna sit there and cry about a comment because I don't like what somebody's saying about me. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, yo, your life's miserable. You, you're waking up at 9 a.m. just to comment on my shit or spread hate, you get what I'm trying to say? So like, your life's miserable, mine's not, you get what I'm trying to say? I'm doing amazing. I live a great life off camera, you get what I'm trying to say? So I don't even deal with it. I see, I laugh, I'm like, Haha, that's a funny joke. I play into the jokes now, you get what I'm trying to say? Because she's just funny, you get what I'm trying to say? Maybe if I was 16, the 16 year old me, you'd probably catch feelings, you get what I'm trying to say? But like, I've grown as a person. It don't, it don't matter to me no more, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, my, my first fan interaction was a WAP still. I pulled up on a WAP. This like, back in the days, you know, when I first started rapping and I was like, still doing like bad shit. And like, I pulled up on a WAP. And the WAP's like, yo, Roadrunner. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, it's not me. He's like, nah, it's you still. And he, he just booked me. He just recognized me. And then, yeah, that was, a, that was the first interaction I had with somebody. But now it's like, a lot of people come up to me now. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, everywhere I go, like, people come up to me and shit. But I appreciate it, you know? I, I love the fans and the supporters. So, yo, the day I got shot, it was weird, you get what I'm trying to say? Because, like, my day started off, like, any normal day. And um, I was in the hood a lot them times, you know? Like, I would always go to the hood. Like, I had that issue, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, everybody always tells me, yo, like, stop going to the hood so much, you know? So, I was always in the hood, just doing, like, hood shit all the time. And I was, like, in an underground. So, I was, like, I was, like, driving around. And everybody in the hood knows what I drive. Like, back, back then, everybody knew what I was driving. So, like, it wasn't hard to find me, you get what I'm trying to say? So I was driving around and I went to an underground, like in my in, in, in one of the buildings where like all the man I'm chilling shit. And I guess I got followed down there, you get what I'm trying to say? And my dumbass, I didn't I wasn't even keeping my six. So like I was like out of here, you get what I'm trying to say? So I go down there, I hop out of my car, I tell my homie, yo, like I just made this song yesterday. Let's like come over to the car, let me play it for you, you get what I'm trying to say? And like as soon as I turned around. I seen a man over there like, and yo, I thought it was my homie cause like, I thought he was playing with me or some shit. But yo, I seen his eyes. I'm like, yo, this guy's out here to kill me. You know what I'm trying to say? Cause I seen it in his eyes. I'm like, this guy's here to get me, you know? So boom, like he just, he had it out already. And the man just started like bucking and boom, I just got shot and boom. I'm like, ah, I got shot. It's another day I got shot, brother. Who cares? Everybody gets shot, you know what I mean? I got shot and boom, I'm on the ground. I'm like, fuck, I got shot. Told my homie, yo, like call the ambulance. I got shot. Called the ambulance. I was blessed. I was awake the whole time, conscious. I didn't, I didn't like faint. I didn't like God was with me through the whole thing, and it was just blessed. You know what I mean? It was, it wasn't whatever, you know. And I just look back at it, and I, I, I like, I'm, I don't make the same mistakes that I was making around then, you know. I was, I'm on point now. You get what I'm saying? I wasn't on point back then, you know. Now I'm more on point now, you know. I got, sh I got shot twice in my back. And five times in my legs. So I got like, I got one, I got one injury right like near my spine. So like when I got shot, the, the only thing that ran through my head was, yo, I, I knew I was going to live. Cause like, I, I just knew I was going to live. You get what I'm trying to say? When you're dying, you know, you're dying. You get what I'm trying to say? So I knew I was going to live. 
But I got shot, like, I started thinking, I'm like, yo, what if I got paralyzed? Because, like, I got shot, like, a lot of times in my legs and in my back, you get what I'm trying to say, like, near my spine. So, um, I started, like, when I got shot, I automatically started, like, trying to, like, trying to, like, lift my back up to see, like, if, like, I can move my back. I was able to move my back, but when I tried to um, move my legs, my legs were noodle. So like in my head the whole time, even when I was in the hospital, I just remember me thinking, yo, I hope I'm not paralyzed because I just don't want to be paralyzed. You know what I'm trying to say? So me, I'm, while I'm going to the hospital, I remember asking the nurse, yo, like, am I going to be able to walk again? And she's like, I can't tell you that this time. You know what I'm trying to say? And then when I woke up, that's the first thing I asked the doctor. I'm like, when, when they did my surgery and I woke up, I asked them, I asked the doctor, yo, am I good? Am I going to walk again? And the doctor's like, yes, you're going to walk again. I'm like, God bless, you know? That's the only thing that mattered to me. I just didn't want to be paralyzed, you know? I, I don't want to live that life. I, like, shout out to paralyzed people. They're very strong, but I don't want, I wouldn't want to live that life, you know? Just... So, yo, in like 2020, um, I ended up getting raided, like, like mid 2020, like April times. I ended up getting raided and they alleged that they found a lot of drugs in the house and like money and shit like that. And they charged me. Um, my bill was consent at first. So like they were, the crown was not opposing to um, letting me out. So she was saying, okay, yeah, this guy can go home. But then guns and gangs from, from Toronto called Hamilton cause that's where I got charged. And they're like, yo, like this guy's bill should not be consensual. Like you guys don't let this guy out, like oppose his bill. So now what they do is they oppose my bill. So I, I need, I, my, my, my surety needed a narrator. Like she needed, she, cause she, she couldn't speak English. So she was trying to get me out. She couldn't speak English. So she needed a translator. So yo, they're like, okay, come back after the weekend. I come back after the weekend. They're like, yo, your bill's opposed now. We're not trying to let you out. So like now they, now like we're, my lawyer and like the crown are like going back and forth. Boom, boom, boom. I have my bill hearing. They deny my bill. So now I'm in, I'm in jail. I did a couple months in jail. I ended up going for my appeal. Um, I won and I came home. You get what I'm trying to say? I came home on an ankle monitor and um, I was on house arrest for two and a half years. Like I was on my ankle monitor. They made my conditions fucked up. I wasn't able to use a phone. I wasn't able to have nobody over at my house. Nobody ever charged for drugs sh like should have these type of conditions. Like why, why, why am I not able to have nobody at my house? Like why am I not able to they're saying, oh, you can only see your immediate family. You're not able to see nobody else. You get what I'm trying to say? So I tried getting around that. I got my uh, a phone condition dropped. That's when I first came on Instagram again. Started rapping, you get what I'm trying to say, from house arrest. So I'm on house arrest. I'm shooting music videos inside my house. Like, I used every part of my fucking house. I used my bathroom. I used my backyard. I used my bedroom. I even put my fucking cat in my music video. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, I was using every part of the house. You get what I'm trying to say? And then um, one day I just woke up um, in 2020, 2022, I woke up March and um, my lawyer called me and my lawyer's like, your, your charges are getting um, stayed. They're going to get dropped. Stayed just means dropped. You get what I'm trying to say? Um, he's like, your charges are getting dropped. And I'm like, why? And he's like, yo, the, the, the cop that was on your case ended up, um, he was getting cross-examined on the stand for another case. And apparently he fucking lied. Like, so when the judge asked him, yo, like, did you lie on the fucking stand? And he said, yeah. So, like, every case that that guy worked on, like, bare people's charges got dropped. Like, another rapper from from from, from the city, um, Lil O.T., his charges ended up getting dropped, too, because he was a, the, the investigator investigated him, too, and it was on his case, too. You get what I'm trying to say? So, I freed up. Lil O.T. freed up. I know a guy who was facing 23 years in jail who beat his shit and came home just because a fucking cop decided to lie on the fucking stand. You get what I'm trying to say? So yeah, he lied and he got charged and I don't know what's going on with him now. I think they were trying to give him time or some shit, but I don't know what's going on with that guy now, you know? But yeah, God bless that cop. Like, thank you for lying, my brother. Yeah, of course, because yo, like people want to see good visuals. You get what I'm trying to say? like. As, like I was working really hard. Like I was on house arrest, making music, music, music videos everywhere. Like in my room, bathroom, like I used every part of my house. And then I remember shooting my last video for my tape 
I had a single off my tape. I shot that video and I'm like, yo, this is it because like I've done everything I could in my power to to do whatever I can to like stay relevant on house arrest. You get what I'm trying to say? It's not like, yo, my shirty's taking me out. My shirty's not taking me out. I'm at home. I'm desk. I'm eating beer food. I'm getting fat. Like my mental health is just like deteriorate. My mental health is just like gone. It's like, it's not even there no more. You get what I'm trying to say? For two and a half years. So after the two and a half years, I'm thinking, yeah, these guys are trying to put me away. So now they're trying to say, oh yeah, your plea deal is five years. So if my plea deal is five years, if I lose in trial, boom, I'm mosh up. Like that's me, that's that's done. There's no more Roadrunner. You get what I'm trying to say? Roadrunner's in the pen now. He's in Kingston fucking, he's wherever. You get what I'm trying to say? Workworth or wherever. You get what I'm trying to say? And boom, I just, I beat my case and like slowly, slowly, like sh life just started getting better, yo. Like I did a lot more shows. I started making, like mentally, I started making better music because like when you're when you're stuck inside the house, like you don't even have the like like the inspiration to like make good music because you're depressed all the time. You're inside your house. You know what I'm trying to say? So like as soon as I got out, like my mental health just changed. I started like making more money, making better music, and like life has just been better. You know what I'm trying to say? And like people would call me and tell me, yo, like come over, like let's do this, like let's do a show. And I'd be like, yo, I can't. I'm on house arrest. Somebody would call, yo, I have a feat, let's do a feature, let's do make a song together. Yo, I can't. I'm on house arrest. Yo, come do an interview. I can't. I'm on house arrest. You get what I'm trying to say? So, like, all these things hurt you. You get what I'm trying to say? As an artist, you need to be able to move around. You get what I'm trying to say? And and when I, when I started moving around, yeah, it's been looking good, you know? Yeah, the message to the youth is, yo, just be good. The street shit is not it. Stay out of trouble. Um, one wrong move and your life's mush up, bro. Like, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. I have homies doing fucking long bids, bro. They've been gone for fucking years. You get what I'm trying to say? Homies that are that passed away. Like my best friend got killed by a cop. My other friend is dead. Like a lot of a lot of bad shit that's happened in my life. You get what I'm trying to say? And like it's all because like we just chose to do what we wanted to do. You get what I'm trying to say? And not listen to like people who told us, yo, just stay out the way and get your money and just stop doing bad shit. You could be doing, a, you could be making your money and just staying away from the violence. You get what I'm trying to say? You could be making money and not hurting people and staying off the radar. You get what I'm trying to say? There's a lot of people out there like that that get a lot of money. They don't go near hammers. They don't go near shit like that. You get what I'm trying to say? So yeah, the mess my message to the youth is just keep keep your, keep a cool demeanor. You get what I'm trying to say? Like the minute you let your emotions play you, you lost, bro. You get what I'm trying to say? You don't want to do life in prison. You don't want to be dead. You get what I'm trying to say? When you're 40, you're going to look back at this shit like, yo, this shit was so worthless. You get what I'm trying to say? So just do good shit, you know? Just don't do bad shit all the time. There's a phase for everything. Like, you're going to go through a phase in life where, like, you want to do that shit and then you grow out of it. You get what I'm trying to say? You look back at it like, yo, that shit, that argument I got into, like, that shit was worthless. You get what I'm trying to say? But, like, to a kid, you get, you get in an argument and you, you get what I'm trying to say? You do some shit that's going to change the rest of your life. You get what I'm trying to say? And prison is not fun, jail's not fun. I'm telling you guys right now, bro, like, that shit's not fun. You guys don't wanna end up there, you know? Yo, that's a tough question because like, as an artist, you really like, I don't really, like, I just, my, my, my motive every day when I wake up is just go hard, like make music, make the best music you could, um, take all the opportunities you could, just keep going, like, as an artist, this is the thing about like music, like you don't you don't really know what's gonna happen. You get what I'm trying to say? Cause tomorrow I could wake up and some bad shit could happen to me, and I, I probably won't even be here no more. You get what I'm trying to say? Because it's happened to a lot of artists in the city. You know, they have big dreams, they fucking they're they're streaming, they're trending, and then what? You end up dying, and that's why I say yo, like you're planning, but God's planning too at the same time. You know, and God's the best of planners, so. My, my, my goal in, in life is just to keep killing it. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, not even like music aspect, like just like in life. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, just keep getting better and just doing real shit. And like, just keep killing it, you know? Yo, so this year you guys are most likely going to get a tape from me and not know like seven songs, six songs. You get what I'm trying to say? Two old ones and five new ones probably gonna drop like a nice tape. I just wanna make sure like I'm making the best music. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't wanna just put out anything now. You know, I feel like my music matters to me. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice. You get what I'm trying to say? Lock in more. 
I've been going to the studio a lot. So yeah, I'm gonna drop a, a hopefully a, a nice um, 10 song tape this year and a lot of singles, you get what I'm trying to say? I, I make sure to always drop every month at least a single, two singles, you get what I'm trying to say? So you guys are gonna be getting a lot of music from me this year, you know? Yo, it's Roadrunner here. Shout out Keeps It Solid. I just did my Solid 16. I just did my interview. Make sure you guys tap in. Peace. Follow me here. C catch all my links here. Gotta break a heroin. And it came in right from Pakistan. Chopper on me. And shit was made up in Afghanistan. She a bad bitch. I heard she been fucking mad.